and good evening. This is Jet, and you're listening to... Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Tonight, I have a special guest with us back on the show, Eric Rutan of Hate Eternal. Welcome back, Eric. Good, good, to, good to talk to you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Guest, that's, that's much appreciated. <laughs> so, hey, I'm Eric. special in many ways. Cause, cause oh, yeah. Some good, some not good. No, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, last time we had you on the show was way back in 2011 with the release of Phoenix Amongst the Ashes. Geez. Yeah, I know. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? What the hell have I been doing for the last four years? That's what my question is. What the hell have you been up to the past four years? A lot, uh, but you know, it's producing and recording a lot of a lot of bands, and you know, touring the world many times, and um, enjoying the fruits of the labor. I guess you know, I just man, I, I work a lot, but you know, when you enjoy what you do, like I do, I mean, I get to work with bands I love and admire, and respect, and um, I get to play music that I worked hard on, and then you know, obviously, I worked really hard on on Hate Eternal. you've been pretty happy over these four years since last we talked (laughs) working hard you know i mean just always trying to get better at my Mm -hmm. craft and um you know better records better tours be better in everything i do it's always like the focus of of my life and career is just trying to advance and and be a better person better producer better you know better everything and um always always looking towards the future to try to improve everything I'm doing, I guess. Well, that's a pretty good outlook, and, you know, you guys got some stuff going on last, so last year you signed to Season of Mist, right? Mm-hmm. And you got a new drummer, Jason Westmerling, and immediately you put him to work making a new album with you guys. So, first of all, where'd you pick this guy up from, and what was that process like? I mean, did you already have his parts written for him, or did he do any of the writing for his parts? Well, I, you know, when we found Chasing Through, uh, Ian and Anton at Sick Drama mm-hmm. uh, Magazine, uh, great friends of mine, um, they, they've been super helpful for so many years in so many different ways, helping, um, you know, expose our drummers and, 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 and allow them to uh, kind of be recognized in a certain way because, they, you know, man, they are the, the best uh, when it comes to just, helping expose drummers uh, of extreme metal and death metal and whatnot. And, um, you know, I've talked I, for years and years with, with with those guys about different things. So when, when we needed a drummer, you know, really those those are guys that I knew. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they know so many different drummers. And they sent me kind of a, a, like a list of different guys that they felt would fit the oh, mold. Nice. And, um, we had seen a video of Chase and Plan. Um, and, you know, I thought, wow, what a talent. You know, obviously a very talented uh, drummer and he was playing a different style of music, but um, I could tell he was obviously a really gifted drummer and uh, plays like a, like an animal. I mean, he's <laughs> a monster on the kid and then a fantastic job. And said, okay, let's fly him down. He flew down for a week and uh, you know tried out. By the end of the week, we we knew he he'd be the guy to do the record. And um, by the time he had got in, uh, me and JJ had kind of we had all we had the songs all written already mm-hmm. um, but we did work with him on some of the parts and, and like, especially on the instrumental to give him some kind of freedom in that in the creative aspect of coming up with some things and you know not really I always like to work as a unit as much as possible as mm-hmm. a band and get everyone's uh, ideas like me and JJ we co-wrote seven of the ten songs on the album we really worked hard as mm-hmm. a team. Um, but it had been so long since we had you know done, done the last record we already kind of had a majority of this stuff 
done and uh, we just kind of gave it the chase and he threw it a click track and scratch guitar and he worked on it for like a month or two and then he came back for a month and we, we practiced every day, did pre-production recordings and um, worked together on different drum beats and ideas and we had a lot of it kind of mapped down already but we, we certainly were open to his ideas and worked with him and then when he was ready we just started tracking and, uh, and voila. <laughs> and the finished product is great so we're going to talk a little bit more about the new album in furnace out now on season of miss records now before we even dive into the album too much we have to see the cover first and the cover of this album is like a beautiful oil painting tell us a little bit about the artist and what the cover depicts well uh, Larry, um you know we we had reached out to him we're going to go a different uh, path. You know, we've worked with Paul Romano for three albums and a DVD. He's an amazing artist, a great friend, and he did a fantastic job. Um, and we just decided to go, um, you know, and, and try a, a different direction. But um, Alair and I had seen um, this, this band, um, Psy, and they had this cover that I just thought was incredible. Uh, and then I saw the Hate Breed, the last Hate Breed cover as well. Mm-hmm. And um, to me, I've always like paintings and uh, a, a lot from the Renaissance era. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've always felt like with artwork that, um, you know, as, as a kid, I remember being a kid and going to the store and, you know, buying Iron Maiden and look at these covers and say, oh, this is freaking fantastic. Mm-hmm. But, like, <laughs> artwork, I always wanted the artwork to be a reflection of the music and the inspiration behind it and, and, and put a visual to the kind of sonic landscape that exists within our music and uh i've always felt like that was very important i always wanted to do things a little bit um i mean everything i do is is, is all filtered it's a little you know different and then i've always wanted different artistic um impressions and you know when it comes to our covers and alaren after many talks with him and kind of sending them pre-production recordings and uh sending them lyrics and, and things of that nature um, telling them kind of artists that I like from the past and, and, and things like that. Uh, I really, from that point, left it in his hands to conceptualize it because I always feel like with artists, um, I like to give them a background uh, of, of, of myself, what went into these songs, mm-hmm. you know, what's behind the lyrics, what's the sentiment, the emotion behind it all, and really let him um, conceptualize conceptualize it in a, in a visual way and um, he, you know, sent me this summary of ideas and, and, you know, and then he started sending me sketches and, of course, as soon as I seen it, I, I just was absolutely, you know, blown away. I, I mean, to me, the artwork on the new method is, uh, man, he did such a fantastic mm-hmm. job. He's um, very detailed and uh, I, I would ask for maybe a change or two and he would even work with me in every possible way and then I, I I couldn't ask for a um a better artist or, or, or a better representation of HR. I think the cover just is, is is perfect as it is. I'm so happy with it. It's very biblical, epic, like you said, very Renaissance looking and it's mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a work of art. <laughs> it, it is. And he worked for months on it. Oh, and, I believe uh, it. Put a lot of work and effort into that and, and uh Pretty much when he sent me the final version, I said, well, you know, damn well, you're going to get a phone call in a few more years because <laughs> you, know, you do work like that. You know, it's just like, wow. I, I, I'm i still, I, I mean, I was just doing an interview today and I was, they were talking about the cover and I was I was looking at the, the box set that mm-hmm. they made, Season of Mist, who's done a fantastic job with the record and, and a fantastic job with promoting it and, and all the different versions of the record that we have and I was just looking at the box set that they made for us and then the artwork wraps the whole box and it just looks uh, it looks unreal it, it's still um, I still it's been months I've had the, the, the cover obviously but it still amazes me the, the amount of detail in there all the art in, in it and you know what I wanted to ask you Eric okay so what's it like for your band right Hate Eternal to record with you are they excited or do they cringe <laughs> when they enter the studio and you're in the band mode and producer mode? Man, I'll tell you, it's a, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard world in here during the Haiti Eternal Records. Uh, for, for myself, a 
anyway, because I, I just, man, I drive myself crazy. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure I drive everyone else. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's a great experience. I think they, they would probably say in the sense that, um, man, I lock out like three months of studio time so we can do pre-production and, mm-hmm. and really gel as a unit, as a band. We'll practice during the day, and we'll do like recordings at night, like demo recordings, and then kind of go through the motion of recording everything before we ever once record the actual album. And that's mm-hmm. something I've been doing for the last three records. And, um, you know, it, it's it's a great experience. Uh, for, it's like um, doing Hate Eternal Records is... It's like one of those things that I don't know for how many records I've always I always feel like man it's I know it's going to be the most challenging thing like every Haiti tour if somebody asks me what are the hardest records you ever do I'd say well, all the Haiti tour records by <laughs> far because of the amount of um, things of responsibilities that I have in in the recording process but at the same time at the end of the day specifically with an earnest where I know that the record. Like, I was able to get some amazing performances out of Jason and J.K. Mm-hmm. and work them really hard and, uh, and and work myself hard to get the best out of myself. And uh, I think at the end of the day, when I listen to the final product of, of Furnace, um, man, I'm very... And, and and this does not come lightly when I say these words because I don't say it that often, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty damn pleased with, with the final result. And, and, and that's um, coming from a self-proclaimed perfectionist that's always hard on everything I do. Um, I'm certainly my worst critic, but I, I feel like with Infernus, man, I just, you know, JJ did a fantastic job with the bass lines and, and, and helping craft the album with me um, musically and, and chasing performance on the drum. I was really able to capture kind of the, the magic that that he has as a drummer and, and get real killer organic you know, performances and tones, and that's something rare in metal these days. And uh, I, I, I think every one of us is very proud with the final outcome. Well, so tell us a little bit about the album itself. Like you were saying, as far as lyrical content and, and what went into it and that kind of thing. Well, you know, lyrically, um, I've always been inspired by, by many things, you know, but a lot of it stems from personal experience and, you know, emotion and, and things of that nature, uh, because for me, music and and lyrics, I mean, I've been writing lyrics since I was, you know, 14, probably, mm-hmm. you know, as a kid. I've been playing guitar since I was 14 or 15. Um, I've been in music, been around music my whole life. You know, a lot of my family members played uh, various instruments, um, classical instruments, uh, predominantly, and... Um, Lyrics for me has been a, a way to kind of express myself in a different way, and uh, a lot of it metaphorically speaking, you know, because I, I use a lot of inspirations and um, interests that I read. I read a lot. I've always been into you know various forms of mythology and different uh, you know religions, and cultures, and, and things of that nature. Um, but I've always kind of used personal. Um, events and things that have happened in my life to really uh, kind of culminate the lyrical approach. And mm-hmm. um, I like the lyri- I like to write lyrics, so people have to really think and read between the lines, so it's not so obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, some of these songs, like lyrically speaking, they're inspired by you know, I think some traumatic events have happened in my life that have really through music has helped me um, kind of cope and deal with um, so much adversity and things. And then lyrics, something about writing lyrics, I spend a lot of time on lyrics, and uh, it, it's, it's another way of expressing myself on top of uh, creating music that really allows me to, I guess, kind of vent out things that... Um, Maybe I don't deal with on a daily basis, but through music, through lyrics, mm-hmm. I'm able to really express myself in a way that um, I can't express otherwise. And um, it, it's certainly been crucial for me, lyrics and music, in my whole career to help establish myself to have a vessel to kind of explore negativity and, and these emotions that 
obviously are in this well inside me and then be able to express it in that way to allow me to, you know, become a more positive person in, in, in life period. And it's therapeutic for sure for me. And, you know, listening to the album, it's, it, it's, it is a great release. You can tell you put so much of your blood, sweat, and tears into it. And it's one of those albums for me that, you know, every time I listen to it, I like another track better than the other one. Now, the last time I listened to it, I think my favorite one was um, Zealot Crusader of War. And, and I think Chasen does a great job on this album, too, for being in the band so short of a time when you made him record. <laughs> Now, you guys, yeah, that's what we did a couple of couple of months, and now I know you guys played some shows this year. Are you going to be doing more touring now in support of the new album? Yep, we're getting ready to do a headlining tour with Misery Index, Beyond Creation, and Rivers of Nile. It starts October twenty seventh, I think, through Thanksgiving mm-hmm. uh, of North America, Canada, and and the U S. And yeah, getting excited. I mean. We'll, going to be, you know, playing a bunch of new songs, so uh, that is always a challenge, singing and playing guitar and some of the stuff, I, especially the, the new record has some really challenging uh, uh-huh. <laughs> vocal patterns, and that's, I try to write lyrics and patterns as a singer, not as a guitar player. Right. Um, so every 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 lyric I write, I've never played, I, you know, I always end up playing the guitar and having, having to play it and sing it later. It's never before the records. It's, mm-hmm. I always write the lyrics as a singer. I practice them as a singer uh, in the studio. Um, and so it's always my job to have to go back and, and teach myself how to play and, and sing this stuff. And I, <laughs> I certainly know with the new record that was the last month or so that I've just really been, you know, I'll sit at home and, you know, it'll be like 2.30 in the morning and I'm like mouthing the words as I'm playing the riffs until we have band practice. Maybe the next time you're writing a Hate Eternal song for yourself, you could make some easier lyrics. <laughs> well, that's such a challenge trying to sing and play guitar at the same time. It's like <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be helpful. That'd be helpful for sure. Like, I think, you know, it's, it's, I'm just that type of guy that has to do multiple things. It's, it's like, uh, you know, I, well, you can see what, what I, I have going on. I have a studio, I, I have a band, I play guitar and sing. You know, I, I'm always. It must be, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm not a, uh, I don't know, maybe it's because maybe it's I'm Gemini, you know, I got a cool <laughs> personality thing going on, I don't know, but I always have to do multiple things, you know, maybe one of these days I'll just do one thing, but, uh, I doubt it. I don't know, <laughs> doubt it, doubt it, yeah, you know, if, that, if it is one thing, it'll be at the beach or something. Yeah, there you go, okay, sleeping you know, or but, something. Uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. I don't, I don't, I'm not even close to that. So. <laughs> so, Eric, what websites can people go to to learn, you know, more about Hate Eternal, pick up merchandise, look for your tour dates, all that kind of stuff? Um, we go to our Facebook. There you go. Uh, you know, Facebook.com slash Hate Eternal, and then uh, uh, Hate Eternal our website, or Mono Recording as a Facebook as well. We have a band camp for Hate Eternal. Um, that's pretty much the best way to, to track us down. Okay, so I just got a couple of things not really hate eternal related that I wanted to ask you, right? No, so I just wanted to mention before I go that, as we all know, Eric, you also, you know, owner of Mana Studios in Florida, lots of great bands recording there this year, you know, like we already talked about Chrissy Ann and Warfather and all that whole yeah. exciting thing. As far as death metal goes now, as a producer and a musician, and you see all these people coming through, what are your opinions on what the scene is like today? of death metal I'm getting back to obviously working with Steve has been awesome because you know Steve's he's one of my great friends and then and a former bandmate obviously with Morbid Angel and um, it, it's it, it's been incredible working with Steve again after all these years um, but and working with Chrissy and, and all the bands that I've been so fortunate to work with for, for so many years um, 
I mean, to me, the one thing about mono recording in me is that I tend to get bands, and, and, and obviously, you know, not just death metal, lots of different bands mm -hmm. for years, but I get bands that want to um, achieve something unique. They want their record to stand on its own merit with a unique stance, so they want it to sound different, unique, and um, people that come here, they know, like Goat Horror, you know, this is a band I've worked with for four hours, man, the uh, Goat Horror <laughs> is like one of my, not only favorite bands on the planet, but some of the, some of my favorite people on the planet, and, and some of my you know, best friends are family to me, and I've always been so honored to work with them, um, and we, you know, have this relationship that uh, is no holds barred, you know, everything's out on the table, and and I think certainly they, you know, they have they've helped me grow, just like doing three records of Cannibal Corpse and working with Fantastic Fun and Madball and Tunes and and and, and Belphegor and more about every record, Christian, they all helped me grow. Um, and I think people know that the, you know the kind of the word is out of them, I guess, about what it's like working with me is that I'm going to work you hard. I'm going to do everything I can to get the best out of you. Um, and because of that. Um, I only get bands in here with, with uh, in my opinion, with a tremendous integrity um, of their craft, and they want to get the best. They want me to work them hard uh, to get the best out of them, to get the best performances and the best vibe for the record. So, you know, to me, constantly I'm reminded of of how awesome it is to you know to be involved in death metal for all these years and, and be able to work with these incredible bands that are still going strong. And, um, and we have a lot of new bands coming out as well. And, um, I've been fortunate to work with younger bands like Rivers and Nile and, and Black Fast. And then I work with obviously legendary bands like, you know, Cannibal and Goat Whore and Delphi Gore and whatnot. And, um, to me, I'm always surrounded by just amazing musicians and, and, amazing people so I, I always say man I think it, it's going strong and, and I, I'm proud to be a part of it and one more quick question that you can answer with no comment if you want <laughs> what are your thoughts <laughs> uh, well let me ask the question yeah. first god damn it <laughs> sorry I'm from Jersey I'm a wife <laughs> yeah I know how you Jersey people are <laughs> yeah it's true what are your thoughts on Morbid Angel now you know, the same as I've always thought about Morbid Angel. You know, Morbid Angel to me has always, um, in my opinion, of course, you know, uh, Morbid Angel has always been one of the best death metal bands of all time. You know, they've, they, to me, they were, well, I'm, I'm not, I always go back to Ultras of Madness, you know, mm -hmm. in 89. I was in high school and I, and I heard that record. And, and to me, it was like light years ahead of anything else that was out at the time. And, and to me, uh, Trey is one of the innovators of death metal. He's, he's an amazing guy, incredible musician. I was fortunate and, you know, honored to be a part of the band for many years and recorded three albums and toured for four. And I learned so much from Trey and David and Pete and Steve and, um, got to have Jared play with Morbid Angel for, for a while there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my friend and bandmate. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, some amazing, some of the most amazing moments and, and times in my life and career were spent with Morbid Angel. And, uh, and I will always, um, look upon Morbid Angel as just being the best and, and being one of the most important bands in our genre. And, and certainly, I don't think anything will ever change how I feel about Morbid Angel or Waver. <laughs> and I, I mean, I was fortunate I got to play with, with, uh, David and Morbid Angel, with Trey and Pete. I got to play with Steve. And Pete, and I got the same character. And, Pete. and uh, to me, I boy, what can I complain about? I got, I got the, I got the best of all worlds, and mm -hmm. um, I know that, I know that uh, you know, Steve being back in the band and working with Trey, that they're they're working really hard on, on crafting a new record. And I really look forward to, uh, yeah, hopefully, touring with Morbid Angel with Hate Eternal. That'd be nice. Um, <laughs> and, and certainly, certainly hope to hear a new Morbid Angel record next year, and. Um, I always tell Steve and, and, and Trey, you know, all the time, man, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm always going to be here for them to help them in any way I can. You know, I owe a lot to Morbid Angel, and, and I certainly um, will always be loyal to Morbid Angel. All right. Well, I'm going to let you get going now after I talked to your uh, forever. Actually, you talked mine off, but that's besides the point. <laughs> 
Well, Bill, thank you so much for the interview. <laughs> well, I was really nice th- catching up with you. Yeah, I was going to thank you for coming on the show and, and to remind everybody that Infernus is out now on Season of Mist Records. And gosh, best of success for you on, on all this shit you got going on there. And good luck on the tour and everything coming up. Uh, thank you so much. Pleasure talking with you.